The official closing ceremony of the 2024 Paris Olympic Games comes up in less than an hour. At the Stade de France in Paris, the spectacle will showcase France's hospitality in hosting athletes, spectators and visitors for over two weeks. Baby theft, a growing phenomenon in Cameroon that causes pain and despair amongst families. From the desperate need for babies to money rituals, the motives behind this wicked act are many. Plus, sports and leisure activities take center stage in Yaoundé as young holiday makers put up a dazzling display of talent and energy. The development of these stories and more in the next 30 minutes. Good evening, dear viewers. Glad to have you on the 730 News with me, Uncle Lady Raihana Tusali. The 2024 Paris Olympic Games will officially come, up, come to a close tonight in Paris during a special closing ceremony to take place at the Stade de France in Saint-Denis, Paris. During tonight's closing ceremony, the Olympic flag is expected to be handed over to the next city, Los Angeles, in the United States of America to host the 2028 Olympic Games. Amongst the different delegations to take part in tonight's closing ceremony is that of Team Cameroon. For updates, let's join Sierra TV's envoy Baudouin Sama standing by at the Stade de France. Good evening, Baudouin. Good evening, we're Nato Sally. Welcome to Stade de France here in Paris, where in less than 30 minutes the official closing ceremony is going to begin. It's going to be 9 p.m. here in Paris, 8 p.m. back there in Yaoundé, where all is almost set for a smooth and hitch-free uh, closing ceremony, during which tonight we are going to have a number of speeches. First, from the president of the International Olympic Committee, Thomas Bach, and likewise we are going to have a speech from the president of the local organizing committee of Paris 2024. And one of the key moments of tonight's official closing ceremony is the handing over of the Olympic flag from Paris mayor and Hildago to the mayor of Los Angeles, Sir Karen Bass, given that Los Angeles will host the next edition of the Olympic Games in 2028. We are told there is an impressive crowd out of this stadium, especially sports lovers trying as much as possible to have access into Stade de France uh, tonight to come and watch live this closing ceremony where security has been stepped up given the impressive presence of key uh, state personalities and likewise a special guest invited uh, by uh, France. Well, Sally, well over 200 artists have been invited to perform tonight uh, during uh, this uh, closing ceremony. As we said a while ago, it's to begin at 9 p.m. here in Paris. It's going to be 8 p.m. back there in Yaoundé and it's to last for well over two hours. Back to you. Thank you for those updates, Baldwin Sama. And back home, health experts at the Mother and Child Unit of the Shanta Beer Foundation have declared that the recently stolen and found baby in Jifo is now fine and safe to return home. The baby, who has been receiving treatment since Tuesday, was found at a medical unit in the Kwabang neighborhood in Yaoundé before being transferred to the Shanta Beer Foundation. Karin Tosam comes back to this horrible story with a happy ending. Prior to her recovery, the baby spent three days in the neonatal ward of the Chantal Bia Mother and Child Center. Now, these health experts have established that her health is restored. The temperature has subsided. She now has a normal temperature and clinical examination is better than on entry. The mother is still in shock. But as she holds tight to her little one, she's expressed relief and a return of joy to her family. I wish to thank all who stood by us during this difficult period, be it through prayers or otherwise. I also thank the Chantal Bia Foundation for coming to our rescue. Meantime, the situation, which has been described as a miracle in some circles, has been achieved thanks to the vigilance of health personnel of Santa Melania in Kolo 3, Kwabang. Madame Difo, who has been discharged, has expressed excitement as she returns home to be reunited with her other two children, whom she's been away from for about a week now. 
and the increasing theft of babies in health facilities is a worrisome phenomenon which psychologists say emanates from several factors ranging from the desperate need for babies and sometimes money rituals. Experts advise that stepping up the security machinery within hospitals could significantly curb the unfortunate situation. Alphonse Abongwa actually reports that new mothers must also be watchful after the birth of their children so as to limit distractions that give room for baby abductors to get their way easily. Wherever virtue finds a comfortable home to settle, vice always seeks a room to cohabit like a parasite. This is the new music that maternity wards in Cameroonian hospitals now dance to. Baby-seeking women, some desperate, others filled with malicious intentions, are flying at lower altitudes ready to pick up babies like hawks that go for chicks. Because we have desperate mothers, desperate women who look for a way to overcome their maternity, to be mother and to, be, uh, to have a peaceful homes. A demand for babies for adoption, child trafficking or other illegal purposes which can motivate people to steal babies. Secondly, uh, lack of security. In inadequate security measures in hospitals can make it very easy for individuals to steal babies. Psychologists say some of these women turned baby hunters in health structures have issues with how society looks at them. Health experts say in the face of this rising social malaise, maternity wards and the entire hospital administration must upgrade security. While new mothers within these hospitals are also called to be more vigilant to keep watch over their babies, there is need for these structures to work in collaboration with law enforcement officers. The facilities may work with local law enforcement agencies to report incidents of baby theft and cooperate in, with investigations. So it's very important. Otherwise, we will have a lot of tragic ends. Babies born to families bring joy. But when other people like wolves roam about such structures to abduct these babies, this joy is cut short and sends the family into pandemonium. Over in the northwest region, the Mesam Territorial Gendarmerie Regiment has recovered eight vehicles stolen by a group of suspects specialized in car theft in the town of Bamenda and its surroundings. The vehicles were uncovered thanks to a two-week crackdown operation masterminded by the commander of the Mesam Territorial Gendarmerie Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Alobode Muabe Pita. Eric Lamia Wufa reports from Bamenda. A two-week operation carried out by forces of the Bamenda Territorial Gendarmerie Regiment uncovered these stolen vehicles. The vehicles were stolen in Bamenda and taken to Abuin Village in Santa Subdivision. We received information of uh, the presence of a gang specialized in uh, stealing of vehicles in the town of Bamenda and its environs. And, uh, we decided to launch a special operation, and that special operation permitted us to dismantle this gang. Here at the Special Office of Resources and Criminal Investigations of Bamenda, these stolen vehicles are set up and modified. As soon as they get those vehicles, because among the eight vehicles which we have here, four have their chassis numbers changed. So it looks like it's the first thing they do as soon as they get the stolen vehicles. Six suspects have been arrested in connection with the car theft. They are expected to be presented alongside the stolen vehicles to the state council in Bamenda. The Minister of Transport, Jean Enes Masinangale Bipehe, was on the Yaoundé Bafusam and Yaoundé Douala highways to assess control and repression operations undertaken as part of the special back to school road safety campaign launched last June 5. The outcome of the two month campaign has recorded 300 offences with overloading and overspeeding as the top, at the top of the ranking. Ewane Pole reports. The context of the vacation season and the fight against road accidents prompted the Minister of Transport and his Director of Land Transport and Bimomen Kendong Divine to take action by making an announced visit to mix control posts along the Yaoundé Bafusam and Yaoundé Dwala highways. 
the move to assess the control and repression operation carried out as part of the special road safety campaign launch on June 5, 2024, also took the minister to some travel agencies checking the different services to ensure that all security measures are respected. But what we realized was that many buses were not comfortable. The way for us to ask the responsible of travel agency to make more efforts concerning the material. While also checking vehicles along the highways, the minister suspended buses in bad state and without seat belt from plying the road and requested managers of the travel agencies to transfer their passengers to comfortable buses. The campaign focused on speeding, driving under the influence of alcohol and drugs, overloading and failure to have roadworthiness documents. The people of the far north region have turned out massively to view the projection of the film Paul Bia, the Statesman. With an extraordinary destiny, this was during the Marwa tour screening yesterday. Amongst the thousands who attended the event was the House Speaker, the Right Honorable Kavayege Jibril, who referenced President Paul Bia as the man who has given all to the far north region. In his speech, Charles Ebune completes that story. The Marwa ceremonial ground in the far north region this Saturday, August 10, 2024, the year of our Allah. Temperatures are at 27 degrees Celsius, clement enough for the heavens and the universe to perfect the Siamese twins' intimacy between the loyal people of the far north region and the New Deal for eternal communion. About 10,000 people of the roughly 4 million people region turned out enthusiastically to view the Marwa regional tour projection of the documentary on President Paul Bia, the man who has given them all. Let me tell you how much I do appreciate the massive presence of the sons and daughters of the far north region in this event, certainly cultural, but which demonstrates their patriotism. Amongst the top brass of the region present are cabinet members from here, the economic and traditional leadership crowned by the presence of the country's third personality, the House Speaker, the Right Honorable Kava Yege Jibril, who equally doubles as the Far North Permanent Delegation Leader of the governing Cameroon's People Democratic Movement. All the speakers hail the creation of the Marwa University, the rolling back of Boko Haram, the construction of the Marwa Dabanga road underway, amongst others, are simply enough to constantly canvas their support for President Paul Bia. The one hour 24 minutes film, Paul Bia, a statesman with an extraordinary destiny, is directed by these two female Cameroonian producers under the supervision of the civil cabinet of the presidency with the artistic mapping of the arts and culture ministry. The electrifying mobilization of the people of the far north region to view the film on the indelible works of their champion Paul Beer in their lives is yet another sure proof that they are the eldest daughter of the new D administration else all is political gesticulation and the population of the far north region have celebrated the achievement of the president of the Republic, Paul Bia. This was after watching the documentary film of the president, a display of the rich and beautiful cultural heritage of Cameroon. Spice David in Emos and Onyaket was one of the viewers. A rich cultural display of traditional sounds and rhythms from some cultural zones in Cameroon, such as from the Oroko land in the southwest region. Served as a warm-up introduction as the population of Marwa and beyond got ready to serve all the 90 minutes film titled Paul Bia, a great statesman with an extraordinary destiny at the Marwa ceremonial ground. They came from within and without the Far North region, drawn from different ethnic origins, political leanings and religion, led by the Speaker of the National Assembly, Right Honorable Kava Yege Jibril, accompanied by Far North Governor Mejiawa Bakari, 
to witness firsthand the projection of the theme of a protagonist they consider as a champion of peace and social cohesion who deserves to be awarded a Nobel Peace Prize. United by the national colors, green, red and yellow, with eyes focused on the same direction, three led giant screens, they appreciated the dexterity of the two producers, Kati Meba and Edimo Solange, who used just 90 minutes to beautifully outline the achievements of the man, Paul Beer, in all of its ramifications since he took over the helm of the nation. The Far North region is the third region where the film has been projected after Betwa in the East region and Douala in the littoral region. In other news, to help bridge the digital gap in Cameroon and open the doors of opportunities, UNESCO Chair for Central Africa Access ICT and the Royal University Institute of Babucha in the West region have signed a partnership agreement. Both parties will ensure you to receive quality ICT training at their doorsteps. Details with Kelvin Nimbo. Through this partnership agreement between UNESCO Chair for Central Africa Access TEC, represented by Armand Claude Abanda and Royal University Institute of Babucha Nietzsche, represented by the promoter, Professor Michel C. Njena Wembo, young people resident in rural, semi-urban and even urban centers will receive qualitative education at their doorsteps. To bring the digital gap, we need a good training program, support coming from the international community. And do we have those who are competent to train? Speaking on the occasion in Bana, Opencam SDO, Lawrence D.N. Jam and Professor Jean Paul Mbia, who represented the Minister of Higher Education, said it is a big opportunity for the youth to acquire knowledge and the needed entrepreneurial skills that will permit them to set up their startups. It is going to contribute to the autonomization of the students of this institution and their professionalization. UNESCO Chair for Central Africa Access TEC allows for strategic and institutional partnership for access of young people and women to ICT in Central Africa in order to enjoy crucial services like online education, e-banking, digital economy and healthcare, amongst others. Over 2,000 inhabitants of Kolkose Monatele, a locality in the center region, have received free health consultations and treatment in the area. The initiative, which is in its fourth edition, is organized by the traditional rural and elite of the Kolkose village, Dr. Zhang Bethelo Zambu. Locals who could barely uh, afford medical treatment or care were given free minor surgical operations and other medical assistance. Sandra Tanya reports. This is Timothée Mbassi. The 42-year-old mechanic traveled three kilometers from Monatele to Kol Kose village just to benefit from this free health campaign in the area. Uh, For 16 years, I have been suffering from stomach disorder and knee pain. I did not have enough money for proper health care. So when I heard of this, I had to try everything possible to be here and I am now satisfied. Just like him, several locals of Kolkose and its environs have shown up in their numbers to benefit from the free health campaign. I've been suffering with eye challenges, so I am happy with this act from an elite of the area who is trying to keep his parents and his brothers in good conditions. The bearer of the initiative, Dr. Zhang Zambo, says it is a responsibility to give back to his community. Medicine is the only thing I have and I can give or I can share with my people. This team of health specialist volunteers are carrying out consultations in general medicine and in other specialties like ophthalmology, dental surgery, gynecology amongst others. The locals will equally get free medication and glasses after consultations. 
and the people of Vok Onamye in the Lake Division of the Center Region are poised to fast track development in their various communities in order to contribute their quarter to the development of Cameroon. They gathered in the locality of Kwanambeng recently for the annual General Assembly, as Gilbert Ongene tells us. People of Mvong Nami Extraction say they are more than ever before committed to contribute to the development of their communities and Cameroon at large. Mvong Nami are found in four subdivisions of the Lake Division. It is the most populated clan of the division. The national president of the union, Professor Tuna Mama, has called on the sector president of Okola to use his experience garnered over the years to steer the ship of the sector to higher heights. Je voudrais vous inviter. I call on stronger solidarity and commitment to the development of our communities and the country as a whole. Ce bureau est fait pour... We are going to consolidate the achievement of the past 14 years and pave the way for better things for our people in this new mandate. The revision of the status of the association, installation of the president of the Okola sector of the union, and a presentation of activities of the 10 sectors of the association constitute highlights of the come together marked by traditional dances of the Leke division. You are watching the 7th Earth News brought to you live from Yaoundé. In religious news, Christians of the Albert Theodonian Parish of the Iglesias Presbyterian Cameroonese in Guaykele here in Yaoundé have celebrated 40 years of pastoral ministry of their lead pastor, Reverend Francois Mokwembe. In a special church service, the Christians prayed for God's grace upon the servant of God and his family as he pursues God's work on earth. Clovis Bawe tells us more. It is 40 years of devotedness, 40 years of selfless service that Reverend Pastor Francois Mukwembe has rendered to God's work and Christians of the Iglesias Presbyterian Cameroonese. The Albert Theodonium Parish is honored to be under the leadership of a man described as the Good Shepherd. The past moment of this church has been uh, very difficult and uh, his appointment here as the moderator of uh, this church has given a new brief for the faithful member of the church. And that is a, a moment of thanksgiving for his good leadership through the faithful member of the church. For a man who has nurtured the dream of leading the people of God, the special church service organized in his honor is an encouragement for him to do even better. God has always supported me and I can only pray for his grace to keep me strong so that I can continue preaching his gospel and fulfill the mission assigned to me. The journey does not end here, but rather prepares the servant of God for greater achievements. And just as the good shepherd that knows how to cater for his sheep, Reverend Pastor Francois Mukwembe is ready to overcome the challenges that may arise during his pastoral ministry in the future. In a solemn and reverent ceremony, the Lutheran Church of Cameroon of the Autonomous Parish of Melen in Yaoundé has consecrated a new group of deacons and deaconesses. The homily of the day emphasized the importance of the diaconate in the life of the church. Delphine Kwancha attended the service on our reports. They are 15 who have decided to serve God and the church with faith and love newly ordained church elders, deacons and deaconesses of the Lutheran Church of the Melon Parish vowed to uphold the teachings and traditions of the church. Today we have been consecrated to the elder services. That is a great mission that has been given to us. We think that by His grace and by the Holy Spirit we can fulfill it. I hope that with the good he will do everything in his name. The officiating pastor, Reverend Damsu Salimon, in his preaching calls on the newly ordained to continue God's work in his vineyard. We are calling on them to attach themselves to this call they have received from God and to put themselves at the service of the church. They are there to support and assist the pastor in supervising the faithful. Christians used the occasion to offer their prayers 
to the newly consecrated ministers. Away from religious news, Vice Admiral Guillaume Guangali has been laid to rest in his native Bikui village in Lolodov, south region of Cameroon. The military ceremony was marked by religious service and eulogies that described the Vice Admiral as a man who inspired many. The funeral ceremony was chaired by the Minister Delegate of the Presidency uh, in charge of defense, Joseph Betiasama. Details with Elvis Teke. <laughs> The final journey to the land of the stars for the three-star vice admiral began with a procession of a section of the Cameroon Navy to the Roger Miller Stadium in Big Bali, Lulodov, South Region. The religious service to celebrate the life of the devoted soldier and Christian who also studied theology saw the clergy of the Eglise Presbyterian Cameroonese and the Bishop of Kribi take turns to pray for the eternal rest of Vice Admiral Guillaume Nguangali. Former colleagues, friends, members of social groups, traditional leaders, and family members of eulogies that described the fallen Vice Admiral as a man with a good heart. He was as devoted to his job as he was to the welfare of his close ones. He was a very good man. An example of a very caring and loving father Grandpa's journey was one of immense dedication, courage, and love. His legacy will forever guide and keep us. Ever be and the best, the best servant you could ever be. We love you. The commander of the 4th Joint Military Region, Major General Sali Mohamedou, described the pioneer vice admiral in Cameroon's Navy as a source of inspiration to his subordinates who lived a life of service and sacrifice. Our artist of the week is Manganga Severin, known by his artist name as Lucky Plus Do. The young uh, musician who believes that hard work, discipline and respect are virtues every budding artist should strive for. He has featured with top Bikutsi queen Lady Pons and the sensational Sandrine Nanga. Emma Tawe profiled him for the 7.30 News. Popular Bikutsi gospel singer Luku Plus Do, who has over three albums and multiple singles with of his smash hit songs, Don Mapa, affirms his musical genre, adds to his artistic flair. I learned different genres of music when growing up, but my environment played a vital role in making a choice. I decided to use her rhythms, that is Bikusi, adding a touch of urban style to it. A passionate footballer who later on delves into music as a career. I always dreamt of being a footballer, but along the line I diverted since most people around me were music oriented. Luke Plus De asseverates his songs communicate God's goodness towards him and resonates with his fan base. The gospel artist encourages budding musicians not to overlook core values of music like working on their vocals. The coming of machines facilitated work for artists because anyone can just go to the studio, sing a song and tomorrow it's everywhere. Young artists like us have to understand that there is much work to be done. The artist says studio sessions continue for his next album. The six-week holiday sports program known as the Fandana Sports and Leisure Holiday has wrapped up in Yaoundé with a dazzling display of talents and energy from the over 200 participants. The youths during the closing ceremony showcased the different types of sports and games taught to them since July 1 to the admiration of their tutors and parents. Chelsea Kuan takes us through the show. The atmosphere is electric as parents gather to witness the outcome of six weeks of training. Even the youngest competitors, some just 18 months, take their first steps towards greatness. They tumble, flip, kick and dance, embodying the very essence of sportsmanship. From gymnastics to judo, 
football and karate, these youngsters haven't just participated but built their talents. One, is, one of the main goal was to keep them awake. We can say we have achieved it, as I said, at 85% rate because when you look at them, they are very happy. As the children perform, the emotions among the parents are as intense as the efforts of the little athletes. I am very pleased with what I just saw only after six weeks. I see the potentials of these kids and I am happy. Each moment is evidence to what can be achieved with dedication and a bit of imagination. This program was very good for me because in the, for me it was an entertainment with, with the other children and I was very happy to be with other children of my age. These little ones may not be competing for gold medals yet, but they are definitely winning hearts as future champions whose journeys begin today, right in this very hall. And that does it for the 7.30 News. Thank you so much for being with us and to have a wonderful night and a great weekend.